Okay, so victory points are kind of weird, aren't they? Like, no one really talks about it, but I find, like, they're super strange and kind of old and archaic. Like, these are systems that you find in so many different games, like, all the way from, like, lightweight games, like, looking at Catan, uh, Ticket to Ride, Azul, those kind of, like, gateway games, all the way up to these big daddy games, you know, the real thick boys, like, Through the Ages, uh, Terra Mystica, even the big chunky daddy. Twilight Imperium. These all have it, and even everything in between. I mean, you can even go to something really weirdly that has it, which is a party game like Spyfall. Yeah, Spyfall has victory points. I don't use them. No one I know uses them in Spyfall, but it's a core part of the rules, and why is that included in there? As a matter of fact, why is it included in any of these games? It's just kind of this weird system that we just kind of accept as being there, um, as the system that's just kind of always present. I'm not saying it necessarily is a bad thing, although maybe I think it is a bad thing. I just think it's strange that we don't think about it. I'm really asking why no one really talks about this, you know? I find that very strange. When I think of victory points, I think of them kind of similarly to like high scores from arcade games or games from that era, like Pac-Man, uh, Tetris, Space Invaders. These all have the same victory condition. It's this weird abstract thing, you know, it's just get the most points. Uh, and that's kind of how it is in, in board games as well. The, the way to win is completely disconnected from the game itself. Now, video games kind of evolved and moved forward from this and moved past it. You know, each game has its own unique way to win, or at least something that's kind of common through the genre, right? But in board games, we're still stuck with this old system. Now, back in the height of high scores, not every game had a, a high score tracker, just like how not every board game has victory points, but it's surprisingly common. I mean, all of my favorite games use victory points. Um, and I don't know why that is. Uh, I don't particularly like the system. Like I said, I think it's pretty bad, but it's so common throughout so many games. I mean, why is it that the way that I win Twilight Imperium is the same way that I win Ticket to Ride? I mean, ultimately it's just get the most points. The way that I get those points is different between the games, sure, and the way that I get those points is thematic towards the game. But at the end of the day, it's still just scoring victory points. It's still just how do I get more victory points than someone else? Why does nobody care about this? I mean, why is it that my space opera is just about victory points? Why is it that my train game is just about victory points? Why is it that most games are just about victory points? Abstract games can get away with this because they're already abstract, but what's the excuse for the rest of these games? Why are they? abstracted by this level. Why is it all the same thing? The way that I think when I play these games is all the same. Like when I'm playing Root, I'm not thinking about cute animals. I'm not making decisions based off of, oh, this is a cute little rabbit or whatever the fuck it is. I'm thinking about victory points. It's fundamentally not a game about cute animals fighting. It wants to be a game about cute animals fighting, but it isn't that. It's a game about victory points like most games are. Victory points also add in weird issues that I don't find are super common in games without them. Like if you look at a game like Terra Mystica, which uses a visible victory point track that's around the perimeter of the board, which you've probably seen before, it is constantly updated as well. So it adds this immense level of upkeep where you constantly have to adjust what the victory points are at. And if anyone forgets what victory points are or what the way that they score them or they do something where they should have gotten them but they didn't for whatever reason, well, there's no way to really go back and retroactively add them, especially in a game like Terra Mystica where victory points are constantly changing and kind of this weird arcane system that determines how many victory points you get for a different thing and you can lose victory points even. It's impossible to figure out where people are supposed to be. I play board games super socially. I'm usually talking to people, engaging in conversation. Sometimes people are drinking right? So this happens a lot where people just forget to do something and games like this are really really unforgiving for that. Oh and god forbid someone knocks off the victory point tracker on accident and they just kind of nudge one of the pieces and it falls over or falls off the table because then good fucking luck figuring out where that piece was supposed to be because it's constantly updated people aren't going to memorize their their victory points from turn to turn so you just kind of have to guess where it was supposed to be at that's just 
it's it's weird it's just weird now twilight imperium actually fixes this issue because they have a system where tracking what victory points people have is very very easy to do you put a little marker on a, on different cards that you would get victory points for so even if the tracker is knocked off which is unlikely because it's even separate from the board instead of this stupid system where it's circling the edge of the board where it's easy to be knocked over so even if that does happen which is unlikely to happen you can recreate the number of victory points people have pretty easily by looking at the objectives they've completed. It's not too difficult. So Twilight Imperium is really forgiving in that way. Am I describing Twilight Imperium as a forgiving game? I guess I am. This video is weird enough. Let's just move past that. An issue that Twilight Imperium doesn't fix is leader bashing and also king making, which are kind of two sides of the same coin. So what'll happen sometimes is in a game like Twilight Imperium, where victory points are very visible, you'll occasionally have a runaway leader. And there's kind of two options that players take from there. They can choose to leader bash, where they try and just everyone gangs up on the same person and just tries to bring them down to the same level. Or if someone is kind of fed up with the game, tired of it because it's going on too long, which might occasionally happen in a game as long as Twilight Imperium, they might decide to help that person out a little bit and just allow them to win, uh, which is not particularly engaging for the rest of the players. And personally, I hate it when I'm made king because it kind of feels like I didn't even earn my victory. It's just kind of sour. Weirdly enough, uh, this leader bashing kind of seems to be baked into the core game of Root. Because there's this asymmetrical multiplayer where everyone's playing very different factions that basically are playing different games, it seems like the way they decided to balance that was just by saying, just attack whoever's in the lead, which is kind of the only way you can have any sort of balance with a root. So root is just constantly swinging between who's winning and everyone just attacks them and the next person's winning and everyone just attacks them. And it really is just eventually someone isn't attacked enough and that person wins. Um, I love Root, but this is super weird. Um, I think victory points are the issue there. Another issue is chaos crafting. Yes, that's a term I just made up. It's pretty good though. Chaos crafting is when someone decides that they are mathematically eliminated from the game, right? They basically too far behind in victory points. There's no way for them to catch up. So instead of trying to win the game, which is a fruitless effort at this point, they decide to have as much fun as they can by just exerting whatever influence over the game they can. This is kind of just human nature though. I mean, people like to have control over their environment and control over the things around them. And when that control is taken away from them and they're basically not able to affect anything at all, they crave for it and they try and take it back however possible. So sure, they might not be able to win the game, but they might be able to choose who wins the game or they might be able to, you know, mess with the other players a bit, you know, just generally craft chaos. Um, this is often not fun for most people, um, but it can be fun for the chaos crafter at least. And in some groups, this can actually be pretty goofy and entertaining, but I think it's something you should try and avoid in your game design at least. Games like Ticket to Ride and also Small World actually kind of fix this issue by keeping victory points hidden, uh, at least for the most part in the case of Ticket to Ride. Uh, in those games, because the victory points are hidden, you don't really know who's in the lead or who's behind, uh, which creates a little bit of suspense. Uh, you, you might be able to guess who's winning, but you never really know for sure. This is a double-edged sword though, because there's also some problems that come with hidden victory points, because at the end of the game is when you have to count up all of the victory points. And in some games, that's quite the process. Carcassonne should be a lightweight gateway game that's great for introducing new people to the, to the hobby, but I don't find that it actually serves that purpose really well at all. And the main reason for that is because of one thing, farmers. I'm not gonna get into it, but basically it's this weird system for how farmers are scored that's not super complex, but it's really not intuitive. So I find that a lot of new players, especially those that haven't played a lot of board games before, struggle a little bit with this. And as a result in future games, they'll kind of focus less on farmers, which sucks because farmers are kind of a pretty big way for how you win the game. Overall, it just makes the game a lot more complex than it should be, and it just makes it 
hard for new people to understand when it otherwise is a pretty simple game that should be pretty quick to pick up. Okay, I also want to say I don't think that victory points in board games are particularly bad or that including them is just always a bad design decision. They're not like a bad system inherently, they're just really old. The, the oldest instance of the term victory points that I could find, which probably isn't super accurate, but it's from like as far back as the 70s. And if you're including the term just points in general and you're counting card games, I mean, they've been used for centuries, right? This is just an, a really old system that has no place being so common in modern games at this point. I'm just saying that it's time that we replace this old system. And I'm not sh** on any designers that are using victory points either, or any games. My favorite games, my favorite designers all use victory points. It's super, super common. They're not lazy, they're not bad designers, it's just that's how the industry is, that's how board games are, that's how the design philosophy is. So people don't really think about changing it. I mean, how often do you think, hey, it's weird that a lot of my board games have victory points in them. It's just not a topic people are thinking about, but I think it's something people should be thinking about. Victory points are something that we just kind of take for granted. We just kind of assume that they're going to be in games and we just kind of accept that fact. So when you see a new game that has victory points in it, you don't really think anything about it. I think we should be thinking about that though. I think we should be thinking of them as a mechanic, which is what they are. To be fair, I work in IT, and I also occasionally make weird videos on the side. I'm not a board game designer. I'm not a game designer. I don't really know how to do all of this stuff, really. I'm just saying what I think is a kind of an issue, and I don't really have a solution. So maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm misguided. If you think that victory points are this great elegant system that is super important and vital to the hobby, uh, let me know. Uh, explain to me why that is. I'd actually be really interested in hearing from people like that because I think you're wrong. And I think you're really, really, really wrong. That was quite the rant, I'll admit. I also wanna just end with I know that there's a lot of new and innovative games coming out. Not all games are using victory points. There's a lot of cool new stuff that is being introduced constantly that is doing different things. And I think that's super great. But I also think that this is kind of a problem, or at least it's something that we should be talking about and people aren't really talking about. So let's talk about it. What do you think? You know, let me know if you agree, if you disagree, all that stuff. Um, I'd actually be really interested to see what people have to say. Also, for those of you that actually keep up with this weird, small, strange channel of mine, uh, let me know what you think about this video. It's kind of different um, than my other stuff, so let me know if it's a good change or a bad change. Um, and also, if you're still watching this, thanks for sticking through to the five people that watched all however many minutes of this. I appreciate it. Anyways, um, later nerds.